We are here at the LAFC Performance Center. Max Bretos alongside Jordan Harvey. Good to have you back. Are you ready to talk some footy? Always, always on a nice, beautiful day here in Southern California. It, it is. It's a little hot, but we're well covered. Thanks to Joe Madden, <laughs> who has set up our studio here. Great shout out. <laughs> we Great get the shout outs. And we just we get a little separation from Ul Ulysses Roman. You know all the guys by now. Coming up on Inside LAFC Podcast, we will discuss the League's Cup. LAFC, uh, LAFC awaiting an opponent coming up there. We'll let you know what lies ahead. We'll talk about... LAFC 2, something near and dear to you as they're starting to piece together some interesting results lately. And all signings from first team all the way down to academy, which yeah. is always exciting to create that pathway up to the first team. We'll talk about the new signings as well as LAFC got busy in the market. It's not just Inter-Miami. And we'll have very special guest Maxime Crepeau. He returned to the field this past weekend. We'll talk to him about that and the journey to getting back on the field. Inside LAFC Podcast with Jordan Harvey, Max Pretos. Rate, review, download, subscribe. Tell a friend. Tell a friend! <laughs> Let's go. Off and running here. Again, a very balmy uh, performance center in eastern Los Angeles. Jordan Harvey... We, uh, we have a lot to look, we have a lot to break down this week. And I know before we get into all these subjects, we have Maxime Crapo, who returned to action with LAFC2, which you've been working closely with. I just want to get your, your thought, knowing what Max has gone through. Uh, what would you think is going through his mind? What would go through your mind if you were in a similar situation with uh, really a catastrophic injury yeah. and that coming back to being able to play again? Yeah, first off, thank you for having me back. You're, you're you don't have to say thank you. No, you are always yeah, welcome here. You can right, roll in right. at any time. Well, it's just nice. This to is be your next podcast. It's nice yeah. to be next to you again. Um, but yeah, going back to Max, uh, how inspiring uh, to see him take the field again for LAC2. I got goosebumps just thinking about it, in it all honesty. Um, yeah, it was. You see it firsthand here, man. Yeah, you see yeah, what, what's yeah, required. See the hard work, the dedication, the time, commitment, all of it uh, that goes into getting back on the field. Um, and not just from Max, from the staff around him too, that is so hands-on and, and works with him um, in all hours of the day, off days, um, all of it. Jason Hahn has been huge for Max Crapo, but for him to get on the field is such uh, an amazing story, and I know we'll have him here to talk about it. Um, but to go through that, I can't wait to discuss the mental side of things, to discuss uh, you know the silver linings in um, sometimes coming back from an injury and what you learn along the process. Um, but it's super inspiring, and it was great to see him out there. And um, I also want to ask him, there was a play that he got knocked where, in, he, where, he, took, he, where he cleared the, the, the ball. The LAC 2 game. Yes, in the LAC 2 game. He cleared the ball and got knocked, and um, it was kind of like a quarterback who comes back and gets that initial hit. I feel like <laughs> felt good. It, felt probably good at, the, at the end of the day, everything's safe and sound. It, I'm sure it felt good. So it'll be yeah. cool to talk to him about. It's got to be tough for goalkeepers because you want to get in the play and you make a save or a hit. And you're like, all right, I'm in. I'm into it, uh, and that's really important. Yeah, and he wasn't necessarily uh, bombarded with shots in this game. I think LFC two actually managed the game really well. Hooked him up. <laughs> yeah, and so um, it was good for him to be able to just step on the field in a setting that, like I said, they controlled the game and, and be called upon in different moments and manage the game because, as we know, he has experience at the highest level in this league and uh, he was great um, for those younger kids and just the leadership. And so that's what it's all encompassing with LA's too. Uh, and you think about Elin Yakubovic and the time he had with the Open Cup and more of that interaction with uh, Maxime Crapo. And think about it, seven months between the MLS Cup and returning. It's a very long time. We'll talk to him about that. We have a lot. We'll talk a little LAFC, too, because obviously Great. you have your eyes on that, and this, they're, they're doing better, and we'll, we'll let you know what's been going on and what's the vision for the, the back end or second half of the season. And I'm going to talk about League's Cup. We have a date for the round of 32 and a possible opponent. It's one or two, and we'll map things out a little bit. That tournament's going to get a lot better. But we'll begin with uh, some business here for the club. I'll start with Eddie Segura because mm. he's here already. And uh, much like the time, I spend a couple days a week here, and I see Eddie, and he's working hard, and he says hello to everyone. And I can't imagine what's going through his head because it's a long-term injury, even longer in, in many ways uh, than Maxime's. And uh, to make him whole, to see him happy, I, I, I love seeing the reaction on social media from everyone, how happy they were organically to see that Eddie was uh, resigned. Yeah, and I think that that signing uh, is also also shows where the club is and is a credit to the club that a guy who's had this long term of injury is re-signed based on what he has done and what 
what the club feels like he can do in the future. And he's just such a great guy, as you mentioned, that um, it's the off the field stuff that uh, really holds value at LAFC as well. Two new signings as well. Uh, and I'm gonna, I took shortcuts here, Jordan, because uh, <laughs> I, I don't know a lot about these players, I but I looked at <laughs> YouTube's amazing. You will right? soon enough, and I do it. And I trust the uh, the scouting of this club. And when we spoke to Steve Chirinello so many times, that uh, Marco Garces about the, the profile of players they're looking at, looking. The one thing that always sticks with me is that Steve would say, in particular, goes, "We are a, a proactive club with our signings. So they have they'll scout guys, they'll look at them, and." do the due diligence as opposed to be reactive where maybe an agent or someone offers them a player and they go, okay, we might be interested. But LAFC has always been uh, true to that mission statement. And these two guys certainly strike me as uh, guys that fall in that category. Mario Gonzalez, who I looked, he was, I want to say this because they both came from the Belgian League. And the Belgian League, I think, was recently listed. I can't remember the organization that did it, but it was reputable. I think sixth or seventh in the yeah. world. Uh, you know, right behind the big five, the Belgian league is regarded that well. And Mario Gonzalez went there and scored 13 goals in 22 games. Philip Krastev, uh on loan there from Braga, uh, where he was able to break through on the Bulgarian national team. I, I look at the credentials. I look at uh, what they've been able to do and I, the trust that I have with LAFC. And these are two really exciting signings that, with Mario Gonzalez, a guy who can help in the uh, the attack, scoring goals. Philip Krostev, who can give you some good depth in that midfield role. Yeah, and I think to go back to Steve's point of being proactive, um, that is huge. And I think that's where I agree that LAFC is, is more of a trailblazer in that thought that um, given any transfer window, LAFC is going to be active, right? Um, whether that's coming or going. And so just to be prepared with whatever does happen, having a plan in place or a depth chart, if you will, that it's it's the next man up. And so whether that's a center back, uh, an eight like Krastev, or a nine, which we're looking for obviously in this window, um, there is more than just one. There is a plan A, B, C, D, all the way to Z, right? And so um, that, I think that is that is what Steve is uh, is discussing, and, and I think that is the important thing to, to talk about. But Again, uh, you know, Mario Gonzalez, a polished striker that you know exactly what you're going to get. It's experienced, a goal scorer, um, and I think that is important, um, bringing in someone like that. And then Krastev, you know, an energetic eight. Um, I've watched a lot of tape on, on both of these guys. Uh, thankfully, he's been a fly on the wall and given my two cents at times. But um, I think he is a perfect eight for LAFC. Very creative, but hardworking, energetic. Um, and, uh, you know, somebody who I think will fit in seamlessly with this group. It's also a part of uh, how LAFC, and they're, they're still recruiting globally, but the, the European young player with uh, Bogush, uh, Stipe Buk, uh, Timothy Tillman, coming over and now two more European players, it, it, it shows that obviously the, 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 the net is far and wide but there's got to be some levels of expertise going there because these relationships are helping find these players that group that i mentioned that's already been here to varying degrees has been very successful and now uh, two more players that are coming in uh, highly regarded and i would imagine ready to 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 contribute yeah and it's a it's a group effort and and marco garces coming in has definitely honed it in and organized it in a way that um, it's easy for a guy who's come off the field to now understand and kind of help in any way possible. But, um, yeah, it is a wide net, and I think it's only getting wider. And with MLS, just the level growing and growing, the attention, um, having, having the uh, – being proactive in trying to widen that net – as I love that with, word. with every year that goes on, um, just gets LAFC ahead of the curve. And I think that's what you're seeing right now. So we'll see. Look, uh, we're obviously Jordan's had a much closer look. I've had a small look. I'm sure many of you at home have had a look. Uh, it's really impressive. And again, doing it at a very competitive league, both of these players in Belgium. Leagues Cup, uh, it's uh, LAFC. We have a game on August the 2nd. So go to LAFC.com about tickets. We know it's going to be either Juarez of Liga MX, Austin FC. I've asked a lot of people. They want the Liga MX team because it always feels like an MLS team, but you want a good matchup that you can get through. It's, be it's better to have – I mean, it's better for the players too, right, to say, okay, we'll have a team that we haven't seen before. It feels like a, 
something different, which is what they want Leagues Cup to be. Yeah, and it's exciting for, for the viewer. And obviously, we haven't uh, had our game in Leagues Cup. We don't know who that is. Obviously, we'll, we'll wait and see. But to watch uh, all the games so far, it's been exciting. And I think you're seeing a different level from MLS teams against these, um, you know, these Mexican League teams in that we're in the middle of our season. And so you're getting the best of us as opposed to, and this has always been the argument, of you know, being in preseason mode when we jump into Champions League, for instance. And so um, it's fun. Uh, it's entertaining. There's so much football to be watched and commentated on on a weekly basis that I feel like I need to just go week to week. And especially with LAFC 2 games and MLS Next Pro games, um, there's just so much to consume these yeah. days for the North American viewer. It's supposed to be an off year, not World Cup, yeah. but Euros. <laughs> yeah, it's supposed to be the dead no spot chance. before yeah. leagues, and there's still a lot to keep you occupied. I did look at the bracket. So Leon won their group. So they've already been put into their side of the bracket, which if I don't want to jump ahead, I know this is bad. Who they beat? Bad who they beat? They beat the Galaxy. <laughs> I just said that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get to this. They beat the Galaxy. Uh, yeah, they yeah. beat Vancouver in penalties, 19 penalty shootouts. So look at the highlights. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Wow. So if LAFC wins and Leon win, that's your round of 16 game. Just throwing that out there. Don't, don't say I jinxed it. I'm just saying... Because we all get those brackets and you like to fill them out. I had a little fun and I saw that. And of course it grabbed my attention. That would grab the attention around here, don't you think? It, all, it always will. And I think, you know, whatever, uh, whatever team it is, I think there will be excitement given L.A. and this market. Um, there's always going to be a fan base um, for a lot of these uh, Liga MX teams. And so whoever it is, I think it'll, it'll draw a lot of excitement. Obviously, Leon, maybe a bit more. All right. We're going to be joined by Maxime Crepeau here shortly. Played with LAFC and uh, beat the Tacoma Defiance. LAFC 2 is your, you're working with. We documented earlier in the season, this is the youngest team. It's more of an academy where a lot of these uh, clubs, and I, I use St. Louis, who they're going to play in Columbus, who made the final last year, were teams that have played guys that they are ready to put into their first team, guys maybe 24, 25, that sort of pro profile. LAFC has gone a little bit differently. They needed some of those younger players through the season to help them. And certainly the game this week, and you saw a lot of those guys that have come in, Nate, uh, Eric, uh, uh, Christian Torres, uh, playing there. And there are better results there because it was tough because obviously it was a young team. How do we see what's coming along and how to best use LAFC2 from the back end here of July to the end of the season? Yeah, so just, just to go back to the start of this without being too long-winded, um, we have a great academy. And we wanted to use that as the foundation. Now, that is a very young group. Um, so there was some struggle with results. And I think, obviously, with the first team having the amount of games that they have had the first part of this season, the injuries that they've had, it's then been uh, a lot of the, who you just mentioned, Nathan Ordaz, uh, you know, Tony Leone's been Julian injured. Gaines but also was there, yeah. Gaines, um, uh, Duane, yes, Torres. They've been pulled up, and a lot of our next pro players, even in Open Cup and things like that. So because they've been offered opportunities with the first team, the second team is obviously going to struggle. So I think what you're seeing now is when the first team gets to settle down with games, they hone in, they get healthy, all of that. Then you'll see better results for the second team now. And that, they bring that know-how, those guys, from the first team. And that Have experience you seen that? down. Have you seen yeah, that? And, and, and just to be clear – Results aren't necessarily the end-all, be-all. It's about the development. It's about getting uh, our players, whether that's academy, second-team contracted guys, uh, moments to develop, moments to become first-team players potentially along the way. So um, when you have a good mixture, and we haven't as much as we'd like, but certainly with Max Crepeau in this last game, you get a mixture of maybe uh, first-team players coming down that can offer leadership, um, obviously an inspiring story and Max coming back for his first game. Um, and then you get a good mix of youth and then a lot of our uh, first team younger contracted guys in there as well. So that's the ideal, you know, uh, roster that you'll have. But we've been on the younger side of it, which, again, isn't uh, – so bad. I, no, think, by I think a lot of these guys ways, now yeah. get opportunities with the second team and you've seen a guy like Luca Bombino who maybe wouldn't have had the opportunities now come in, earn a contract, and now he just trained for the first time with the first team, which is like 
so amazing. And it, are you it see gives, it etched on their faces that's, when you're that's here? The, that's that's what brings me excitement these days is seeing guys kind of get to the next level or just get opportunities, especially ones that deserve it and appreciate it like a lot of our guys do. We'll talk to Maxime Crapo about LAFC two and the and the the opportunities it provides it's for the young players who are bringing back some of that expertise. We're all happy that it's there. And we'll, we'll keep tabs on LAFC, too. They got some big games. They had the, the game with the Galaxy. They lost that one. But the, I, what I would say is the there's trajectory. another one coming up. There's another one coming up. The trajectory is good. Whether, whether how you view it, I will say it. It's been going this. You're getting goals. They're getting results. It's a good sign. Uh, it's trending in the right direction. We're also going to talk about the senior team here as well. It's been two and a half weeks, or it will be two and a half weeks between game. I know everyone's chomping at the bit. They had a time to refresh a little bit. And now in the games. This is what we've been looking forward to. Have you been refreshed? No, I know we've had games <laughs> for LAFC too, so I didn't really take too much time off. Maybe a couple of days here and there, but maybe in the future. I All don't right, know. I don't know. we got to we'll put see. that on the priority list. <laughs> a lot to cover here on Inside LAFC, uh, the podcast. Rate, review, download, subscribe. We'll be back with our very special guest, Maxime Crapo. We'll talk about his return to LAFC. Welcome back to Inside LAFC podcast with Jordan Harvey, and uh, what a wonderful uh, time to be joined by. Any time's a good time, Maxime, but. We were all thrilled this past weekend to see you return with LAFC2. I wanted to ask you, uh, we, we'll talk about this journey, obviously, and I know you've, you've spoken a lot about it, but it's interesting because we're starting to see that light at the end of the tunnel. How is this different for you as, as a player? I mean, playing regularly for so many years and then having this big gap and saying, okay, I'm going to play. What, was, what went through your mind as you prepared for this game in particular that had to be different from games in the past? Pre-injury, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I was mostly uh, it was mostly excitement and uh, a bit of nerv <laughs> nervousness as well uh, because nine months in the making is a long time and there's been quite some ups and quite some downs as well. But I've mentioned that I wanted to, to enjoy the game again because I've missed it so much. So uh, by doing that, I was excited because I was finally getting out of the way of saying, OK, uh, get over that hurdle of, uh, of getting back into into shape, into the game mode and to playing. And then uh, obviously a little bit of nervousness because it's like, oh, I'm doing this again. But it feel like in your body because maybe that's a movement I haven't done in some time because this is a game scenario. This is not, you can't imitate yeah. that in training. Yeah, exactly. But I, I had fun. I had yeah. fun and uh, I just let it play and just let it play. At some point you have to jump and uh, I felt ready to, to jump. So it was, it was good to go. Um, in the locker room is something, and I know you said there's a little nerves there too, mm -hmm. but the, the impact, and I, I always make comments instead of ask questions, you know, just because I... He'll answer just, them, but... But just like sitting back, every time I, I've come into the locker room, especially as an, if you see an older guy come in, you don't know the impact that it'll make. And it was so evident that having you, having a, a few other first team guys in there, made the environment just uplifting and the energy was infectious and i and i know you felt that um did you uh, i guess that's the question did you feel it and did you use that yeah i felt uh, a little bit uh that the guys were really like uh listening as well and looking at, uh, at the how i prepped and uh how i was i was talking to a few of the guys preparing the room as well because uh we had a 90 to play and uh, i'm not too uh, comfortable at, with every single one of them because i'm still knowing them uh i've been a couple of training sessions with the second team but overall personally i don't know them as well as the first team guys obviously uh so i'm still getting to know them and it was important for me just to say hey how are you and this is how I roll you know but, you're you're gonna be there you're you're gonna be there and but honestly, just that we're coming together, from you, know? you yeah. I think is what impacts them yeah. is is coming from a guy who literally the last game was MLS Cup mm -hmm. and the amount that they look up to you as well as some of the other first team guys and to have you there just just having those conversations is something that is a is a main, amazing experience for them mm -hmm. And I just think it, it, the way you handle that is awesome. My question, Thank you. though, will be <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> my question, though, will be is is this journey? Um, we so often just see the final product, yeah. and you've gone through a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And my my question is that silver lining. What is it that you have learned on that journey um, that maybe you didn't expect going into it? Because I think a lot of players who get injured it's the mental side of things that's most difficult um but they don't understand that there is a lesson in all of this and there's need there needs to be time to reflect on that mm -hmm. is there something that you've learned kind of throughout that 
Uh, I mean, the mental side of things, uh, physically, uh, to get over the, the pain and to get over that discomfort and to be comfortable again, it just takes time. Uh, you got to just follow your your, the, your rhythm of your body. You cannot really push it. If you pushed it, well, you're not going to help yourself. But mentally, it's kind of uh, getting over that hurdle. And, and it was difficult the first few weeks, especially the first few months, because as uh, we've mentioned in, in the past, it hasn't been uh, easy at some, some moments. Uh, but to be fair, it's more mostly how to take the day-to-day, -day, uh, how to take the small wins, the small positive things, and move on from that and stack up those small victories, basically. And how do you not, folk, I guess, how do you not fall into the, um, the hole of focusing on the negative? Oh, the, the, it's the, season, has, the season uh, has started and I'm not out there with the boys and, you know, all of that. Like, how do you not focus on that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of a, a, a thin line as well because uh, the first start of the season, I wasn't even close to be on the grass, you know. I think uh, that part where it's more difficult is when you smell the grass, when you're on the grass, when you want to go faster than what it is actually. And I've always been a guy like this as well that is going a thousand percent and I have no breaks. You got to pull me out because I'm going to go. Um, so I think that's the, the hard part at some point of just uh, being a bit patient, I guess, which I always struggled over. <laughs> yeah. But uh, that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. What did you learn about uh, being patient? And, and I mean, we were here along the ways, and I know there was moments where I'd speak with you. I'm getting there, and then you would, you would hit a, mm -hmm. a speed bump or a, a block, a roadblock even. And I, there's a finite time as an athlete to be in there. So. Um, how is knowing that you know time may not always be on your side? How do you remain? What are the, the lessons there about remaining patient? Or what are the things that you saw that said this worked for me to keep me at reaching the goal when I'm ready to reach it? Yeah, I mean the day to day is really important uh, to put all the all the luck on your side basically. So you do whatever you can to affect what how are you gonna feel the next day, and so that's a big part of of the rehab process of doing every single thing to feel good the next day and to keep carrying on. And at first, uh, when I was in the field, it was one every second day I was on the field and it was okay, back to back. Then it was three days in a row and then you can put a whole week together. Um, but this is basically seeing the bigger picture uh, than just what's next tomorrow. And uh, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to do because uh, the competitor inside always wants to push. Uh, but it's something important to keep an eye on it as well. Yeah, it's those, it's those little wins, but then obviously you do anything and everything you can to give yourself that advantage, whether it's getting in here early, going in the, the hyperbaric chamber, um, or staying late to do some you know extra recovery. But I would imagine that th doing everything you possibly can lets you rest assured that uh, you've done everything and you've left it all there and you can be positive with everything moving forward. Yeah, exactly. And it's part of the preparation as well yeah. as uh, once you go on the field, well, you, you haven't put anything up to lock or up to anybody's end. You, know, you take it onto your own matter and your own end. So that's how uh, I approached the past couple months, honestly. And uh, so far, so good. But I, I can't stress the importance of that, whether it's coming back from an injury or you've been benched or you're not playing well. Focusing on the little things that you can control and then building on that day to day, whether it's, you know, as you said, two days on. I just think that so often young players particularly, and that's what I've been working with, and, so that's why I'm asking these questions. They, and focus, they may face this, this they, injury. It's the reality of sports. 100% or just not getting playing time, mm -hmm. for instance. And I found that in college. It's, uh, it's those little moments where instead of focusing on the negative, you're like, well, actually, I'm here in LA, you know, I've got a beautiful little baby. Uh, I'm out here working out, like just focusing on the little things that then help you actually stay positive. Yeah, correct. When you go home, uh, I leave I leave work at work. Uh, yeah. You know, sometimes work comes home, <laughs> but uh, I try to not to. Uh, but to be fair, it's these little details that you take for granted that, yes, and I have a beautiful family and we're all healthy and uh, that's bottom line at the end of the day. Uh, but like I said, the competitor inside, wants to go faster, wants to go higher, uh, as fast as possible all the time. Uh, but you, when you put things in perspective, of course, uh, there, there's, uh, there's worse places to be in and worse situations to be in. 
I'm going a little backwards here, but how bad was that physical discomfort? You said you had to clear that before you could even think about doing it. And we knew this was a big, big injury, but you, in those early weeks or early months, mm -hmm. I mean, how to sleep, to do anything, was it? Yeah, broken fib, broken fib, boat clean snap, it's difficult, man. Uh, the <laughs> I can't even imagine, Max. I'm just, <laughs> just that I statement you I'm just made. Just you saying that's yeah, making me yeah. that's <laughs> uncomfortable. Crazy. Yeah, uh, first couple of weeks was terrible. It was not uh, easy because uh, the day-to-day -day was affected and you come from being 100% uh, the apex of it to absolutely zero and you cannot even get a glass of water. And so uh, that th those are the, the facts, those, those little details that uh, we don't necessarily see and we take for granted. Every time you break something, like I broke my thumb, I was like, oh, I can do whatever. And then you're like, oh, what the hell? I need my thumb and day to day <laughs> well, stuff. You know. Yeah, don't break exactly. Your thumb. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you need your thumb. <laughs> exactly. But now you break your leg. Yeah. And every step, 24/7, yeah. you take so. that for granted. And you but, take that for granted. But now, but then you get on the field and you have a 90 minutes with LAFC two. Mm -hmm. um, there was a moment that I wanted to talk to you about. But how did you feel? Mm getting through that 90 minutes. I know what moment you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> I talked to you about <laughs> it. <after laughs> We're looking forward yeah. to it, the, the uh, answer. Yeah, honestly, uh, it was good to focus just on football. Uh, I didn't feel anything physically, so it was uh, amazing. Uh, my body fell 100%. So now I was just focusing on the football and the little details and the tactics and the positioning and the physical aspects. And so uh, getting 90 minutes was, uh, was great to put in my body because uh, leading up to that moment that you're gonna ask, um, the barrier mentally of saying I can do 90 is gone. Now it's just uh, keep on going like this and putting two 90s together, three, four, five, yeah. and going like that, yeah. But much like a, a quarterback who's come back from a leg injury or any sort of injury, uh, oftentimes they say that first hit is when they actually felt mm. more comfortable. And at the end of this game, as you're clearing a ball, a guy kind of ran through and I, I always hated when players did that and they kind of left the leg out and they caught the goalkeeper knowing that they were going to follow through. But for you, it was like, in the stands, I was like, somebody, yeah, yeah. you know? Easy. And, and Easy, Harvey. I'm just curious if that's how you felt after it, given that obviously you were safe and fine, yeah. but like that, that hit actually was like, you were happy about it. Yeah, exactly. I saw the guy come in and I knew he was coming, but uh, I was kind of surprised that he didn't really slow down or stop because he, on the field, you know when you're winning or not winning a what challenge. A so he, he, Bit of naive, fine, yeah. young, running, wants to go, so no problem, and it's part of the game. Uh, That's, it's a part of the game, and it's recreating a game scenario. Yeah, it's, part as of bad the game. as it might be. Uh, as I kicked it, he just followed through. I pretty do like 360, and it's literally where everything broke. So it was like shin to shin or foot to foot, whatever the contact was, but didn't feel any pain, and it was totally fine. I was like, all right, that's cool. That's that. That's totally gone now. Like yeah. Iron Man with that rod. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think it's gonna it happen works. again. Yeah. Yeah. It's back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was. I mean, we were talking about the game, and they they did such a good job defensively. They didn't let you face too many shots. We can chat with those guys to maybe let a couple through for the next time. No way. Need. No way. We need. We need that cream cheese. No. <laughs> you were mentioning about going 90 minutes, but how do you view the next uh, stretch? Um, and obviously, LAFC too. You play really good competition. You'll play against guys that will be playing MLS minutes um, at some point. Uh, I think the St. Louis City team is a perfect example they have next, but how do you view squeezing the most out of this LAFC2 exper experience with hopes that at some point in this season you could look at Steve and the coaching staff and Oka and say, hey, can uh, I be considered for the uh, the 18 or an 11? Yeah, yeah, this is always going to be up uh, to the staff. Uh, for now, uh, I have to focus on the day-to-day -day and the day-to-day -day work. Uh, like I've said, uh, I feel 100%, but at some point I will need to, to, to get minutes and to get games because as we said and as we know, uh, you can reproduce that game feeling. Uh, so uh, that's just going to be up to up to the plan, up to the, the staff, and say, okay, we're going this direction, and uh, and we do it. But as of now, I feel I feel really good. And he's got a little clout with the LFC two guys like that. You know, he can walk around now. You're making new relationships, off off and running. We're all thrilled to see that. We're all. It was a wonderful moment when we saw it on social media to see you walking out on the field there, and we look forward to seeing you doing that again here in the not too distant future. Feeling good, looking good, Maxime Crepo. Thank you, guys. All right. All right. That was a good interview, even with his <laughs> statement questions, which are fantastic. Yeah, comments. Uh, yeah. We'll go. But, hey, I hope you enjoyed Inside LFC Podcast. Maxime Crepo, we're here at the Performance Center, uh, bringing all of the faces of LAFC to you so you get to know the club a lot better. Here with Jordan Harvey, LAFC original. 
Remember to rate, review, download, subscribe, and tell a friend about our little podcast. We'll be back again next week. We'll be talking about actual games again in the League's Cup. Finally, we're playing again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>